Okay, let's go Bunny Yip. Let's go Suchi Noku. And let's give you a little extra support here. You're the he? I know! So stop letting me divide you. You should just agree with me. <laughs> oh. Inedible cucumbers. I got no problem with our battle stations. I just like, I don't know. I felt like I was kind of spitting in Islands of Insight. When I was like, chat will always, if you ever tell chat you bought anything, they'll be like, why would you buy that? Why didn't you just do X instead? The only exception is even if your computer is only like a year old, they'll be like, oh, you should definitely get like some new hardware in there. You got a 2080 Ti? Bro, that thing's like four years old now. You've at least got to get a 3090 Ti. And if you're ever like, I bought a new vacuum cleaner, people are like, what's wrong with your old one? <laughs> I'm still wearing the same shoes that I bought when I entered 12th grade, and you've bought a second vacuum cleaner? Yeah, how much you got in your PC, little bro? That's different. That's different, okay? I work from home. That's different. Crickets. All this wisdom and all I get is crickets. We're in the 40 series now. God does not determine what series we're in, okay? That's Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA. And you can choose to live by the rules that he sets out if you want, but I'm marching to the beat of my own drum. It's not, it, it, like, it's not like they mined like a new, they didn't invent like a new field of science. They just got to the end of the nines, right? And then they were like, we got to go up to the threes now. There's been a ton of advancement in computing in the last four years. How does this benefit me? Okay, not running the sponsored stream game at 17 FPS, that's definitely true. But what? What am I going to do with this increased computing power? We're playing Super Auto Pets here. I, I, the other thing that I play 90% of the time on stream is uh, Jackbox Games, which uses like seven centibytes of RAM, and then browser-based games, Google Chrome maybe for sure. Would be really like, bro, 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 but when Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC, how are you going to play Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC with the photorealistic mod? I'm not going to play that shit because they're always like, John Marston, thanks for coming. Your actual mission is an eight-minute horse ride away. Then when you get there, they're like, fucking ride your horse eight minutes that way and capture this guy and then ride your ass eight minutes back to me to get your loot. And then they give me the loot and I, to get my next quest, I got to ride my ass eight minutes back to town. But the sand, oh, look at the telemetry effects on the sand. <laughs> What are, I, I'm, I'm holding, I eventually we'll buy a new computer, okay? I'm holding steady on this one, though. I don't want to, again, it's the AR, okay? I'll buy a new computer with a better video card, but I'm hoping that they can make a better reason than, hey, the new 7 out of 10 AAA game that you didn't want to play is going to look awesome, okay? It's probably going to be because, like, the fucking solder on this is melting or rusting or something. I don't really know what goes on inside of the box. I just press the button to turn it on. Go with one of these. Yesterday you said the combat's boring. Today you say the riding is boring. Which is it? Well, in Red Dead Redemption's case, it's all boring, except the cutscenes. But all the, the gameplay parts, not only are the, it's, it's the opposite of the classic restaurant analogy, right? The food here is, is not good and the portion sizes are too big. You can like it, everybody likes it, that's fine. It's just, I don't have to like it. Why are you offended that I don't like it? 
You didn't make Red Dead Redemption, little bro. You're not like Bill Marston. Okay, we're going Bill Mana mode. I'm just saying I would like it more if they made Red Dead Redemption into a game where you played as like uh, the commander of a squad of mechs and it, play, it took place on like a grid and you could see predictable outcomes for absolutely everything that happened and based on your results within that grid you got more or less resources that you could use to upgrade your mods in cool or your mechs in cool ways that interacted with one another hey ham1337 thanks for the gifted subscriptions thank you isn't that into the breach yeah but when we got into the breach everybody said mm, it's okay but i want ftl too Meanwhile, then you get Red Dead Redemption 2, and everyone's like, ding, ding, it's okay, but I wish they made Grand Theft Auto 6 instead. Grand Theft Auto 6 might be the exception, though. When it comes out, people are probably going to be like, I'm glad they made this. <laughs> if I had to guess. But that's because they're doing the right thing. They're making one of those every 17 years. Instead of every 1.7 quarters. Also, editor's note, I've never played um, Red Dead Redemption 2. But I did play Red Dead Redemption Run uh, 1. Mostly the multiplayer. <laughs> we can tell. I, I, I was very excited for Red Dead Redemption 1. He's got his jackalope bouncing up to the front there. You ever play Gun? I never played Gun. I do remember, and again, people are going to be like, you're sick. I need to remind you these are ones and zeros, bits and bytes, right? The, one of the things that I thought was cool about Red Dead Redemption 1 is I remember like, I was on my way to a quest marker or something, and there was um, like a dude tied up with his hands behind his back, and he was like, you got to get the, the bandit that tied me up. He's staying in Glib's cave. And I was like, I hear you. I was like, oh, my God, a living world with, uh, with quests everywhere. It's not just like one dude hanging out outside of a saloon until you press X on him. Like, there's dynamic quests. So I, I rode over to the bandit's cave and went, pew, and I blew the bandit away. Then I rode back to the dude, and he said, thank you for... Uh, killing Bandit Dave for me. I really appreciate it. Now on timey. And then I took out my piece and I blew him away too. And I said, fuck you, man. <laughs> I'm the master of my own domain. And I was like, that's smart game design. But then after that, it was, uh, I remember there was an extended segment where you had to protect protect some dudes like snake oil wagon from robbers and you committed like 92 murders over the course of that and then the dude isn't even like a nice guy and then they don't let you shoot him because he's part of the narrative and I was like cowards <laughs> say what you will about Bethesda but they got absolutely no problem being like yeah you could shoot the dude that just gave you the question in the head if you want it might ruin your game forever but you could do it They don't do that anymore? What? Since when? No! Bethesda's gone woke or something. All right, hang on. Treasure map, ogre. Ogre plus experience generator. This is the way. Mana Andy's in the chat right now. You know what? Forget a Rambutan. No, forget this. I'm selling my best unit. I'm going, this is absolutely psycho mode. Watch this. Sorry, too many crickets. He, oh, it's only when a friend levels up. Oh. <laughs> 
No, 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 no. This is why I think it'd be funny to watch you play Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, I mean, it sounds funny, but then, you know, the second I started, like, marking an NPC, people would be like, no, he gives you, he gives you Dil, Dilgo sword quest later. That monster you slayed actually could have been pacified non-violently through a speech check if you simply listen to all of his dialogue. No disrespect to Baldur's Gate 3. That's a game that's fire. It's just too long for me, okay? Lots of disrespect to Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. A game that exists only for profit-driven enterprises, in my personal opinion. Now, I know a lot of them, that's like a big part of it. But you can, kind of, you can have good stuff, too, that also makes a lot of money. Okay, watch this. I'm not actually cynical about gaming. I would say I'm neutral about gaming. I'm simply cynical about AAA gaming. I think indie games, you know, there's been a lot of interesting indie stuff that's come out. I, the thing is, you guys, not all of you, but many of you are hypocrites. Because whenever I play a 7 out of 10 AAA game, and I'm like, I'm not enjoying it that much. They're like, oh, he doesn't like any games. Whenever I play a 7 out of 10 indie game, the chat is all like, this shit looks boring as fuck. Play something else. <laughs> they got no respect, man. You know it's true. She got the damn thing on her. Do it. Up your hair. Can you imagine if you turn it on and I would like ah 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 ah? <laughs> <laughs> imagine if like I, I went and I had like a big cone on the top of my head from where the vacuum had sucked on my skull. <laughs> oh man. What the fuck are we doing, man? Friends summon. Give it one attack and one health for every level three pet salt this game. We brought it back. We had some fun. Well, we're not selling. I don't know. Maybe we will sell some level three pets. But how the fuck are we going to sell enough level three pets to justify this dude's existence? Like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it simply doesn't make sense. Your ass is cooked. I am to salmon of... I can't afford it. <laughs> oh, bro was about to say I am to salmon of wisdom. Holds up spork. Jersey Devil works pretty well with Quetzalcoatl. Oh, Coddle the Light Keeper. I understand what you're saying. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Hey, a, a vampire bat. What an interesting archetype you're running there. Quetzalcoatl. We will, we will look for him. I resemble that remark. Quetzalcoatl. Honestly, bro, I don't know. Just take six more mana, because the mana decays once per turn anyway. Does the game ever start? <laughs> oh, man. Well, we're cooked on this one, that's for sure. How's she vacuuming without AR? I know, bro. I mean, it's like... What, what are you doing here? So true. I mean, it's like, it's, they just invented the light bulb and she's up there using a candle, bro. It doesn't make sense.
I don't think I want this lad. He's a level three though, right? So actually, if I buy this motherfucker and then sell him, the Jersey Devil's gonna get even better. Which is good, because it's pure ass right now. So now, finally, whatever I put out there is gonna get buffed. 1-1. One, one. Is Quetzalcoatl a tier five? I am to Salmon of Knowledge. It's a tier six? That's insanity, bro. Why would you ever take this in a world where the vampire squid exists? I don't know, maybe we got time to level you up. And then we, you know what, run Team Spirit as well. I don't know. <laughs> you gotta stop telling your jokes with the crickets in the background. I apologize. There's a lot of there's a lot of crickets going on. What are you doing with this Jersey Devil garbage? I'm resisting the temptation to just exclusively run vampire bad over and over again, okay? I'm from Waterloo where the vampires hang out. I I forget the rest of that interview, but it's a good one. This is the meta build? What? I am to Peach of Immortality. Shut up. <laughs> it's so, as a streamer, it's so much better to just get told to shut up instead of like actually argued with. It feels so good. You're like, you know what? When someone argues with you, your initial response is I'm gonna argue back. If someone says shut up to me, my first thought is like, you know what? You might be right, I'm probably talking too much. Jersey Devil? Quetzalcoatl? To Salmon of Knowledge? Quetzalcoatl? Quetzalcoatl? Hot dog? <laughs> what is my man saying? You think Sips has ever seen the Jersey Devil? I always, wait, is the Jersey Devil an old Jersey phenomenon? I always thought it was like a New Jersey thing. I always thought it was like a Joe Piscopo sort of, sort of thing. If we combined our squads, we would be unstoppable. It is New Jersey, okay. Quetzalcoatl? The Light Keeper? Smells like Team Spirit? We're not gonna, we're not gonna get the Quetzalcoatl, man. There's no time. We're either going to lose or we're going to win by then. We're probably going to win this one because bro's running uh, Elden Ring horse. Never mind. It seems incredible. What? It just keeps coming back to life? Oh, he's going to summon like a 52-52 Chimera here. That's bad. He kicked my ass, bro. Dr. Thanatos. <laughs> All right. This time, though, this time you're cooked. It's so over for you. Excuse me, I'm kicking my ass. You're chain queuing? I only got five more minutes. I got to do something. All right, I've insulted you guys enough. Why don't you insult me a little bit? I'm going to ask a question. How many bagels a day is too many bagels? Counter... Addendum to the information, to the question, I should say, it's the only bread product I'm eating right now. I do have another serving of grains at dinner time, usually some kind of rice with, with some beans in it. Three, three is too many. That's exactly how many I have. I have one at uh, 5 a.m. with some cream cheese when I wake up, and then I have one at 8.45 before stream when I finish my bike ride. And then I'll have one with like some meat and some vegetables on it for lunch. 
But the thing is, I also found myself saying three is too many. So I bought bread. And then I was just having a bagel early before my bike ride. And then like a sandwich before my stream, which is basically just a bagel, but like square. And then having a sandwich or a bagel for lunch. And I was like, well, like, is this really, like, I, I'm now not eating so many bagels, but at the same time, I kind of feel like I'm, it's the same effect at the end of the day. What's up with the carbo loading? I'm pretty sure, like, my base metabolic rate plus the amount that I cycle means that I need to eat, like, maybe, like, 35 to 3,600 calories a day. And especially in the morning, like much of that needs to be relatively simple carbohydrates. How many calories are in the bagel? That's, again, not to just be funny, but like I'm kind of pissed off. I'm pretty sure the bagels are like 220 calories each. I haven't been back to Costco. The Costco cheddar jalapeno bagels are 330 calories each. My ass was zooming! At 6.35 in the morning, when that shit hit the bloodstream, I was off to the races. These, like, Western Family bagels from Daryl's Deals, they're, like, 220 calories each. I still like the Ogopogo. You need some freaking, you need some stuff, bro. You need like a little support? You need some mana? Can you get some mana? Would it kill you to get some mana? Would it kill you to make the first enemy cold? Oh, good. Oh, cold takes more damage. It doesn't mean they do less damage. I got this all backwards. The whale passes you the bagel, what would you do? I'd boof that for sure. You really think the whale would pass me a bagel though? I haven't seen the movie, but <laughs> I always, anytime someone mentions the whale, I always think about the, the tweet that's like the most unintentionally funny moment in cinema history is when the dude who delivers the pizzas to Brendan Fraser every day finally sees Brendan Fraser and gets disgusted that he's a big fat guy. I just, I, every, time, every time someone mentions the whale, I think about that tweet and I'm like, did they really? I'm pretty sure the pizza delivery guy would be like, I kind of called this one. I'm at this house every night. <laughs> Make the first two enemies cold. All righty then. All righty then. You got to check out poor things. I know. I would love to. We're actually. I'm getting optimistic that I'll be able to resume. Um, I don't want to call it normal life because whatever you're living is like normal if you're living it long enough, right? But like, I haven't been able to interface much in with with art and culture in my community since the birth of my daughter but now she's getting more independent she's doing lots of activities and stuff i still like to go see a movie at the movie theater takes like let's be realistic it takes three hours you need to like either drop your kid off or get a babysitter it might take you 30 minutes to get there the movie's going to be realistically two hours long it's going to take you 30 minutes to get back so, so it might even take like four. I don't have a four hour window yet. I would say my maximum window right now is like two hours and 50 minutes. But my maximum window this time last year was like eight minutes. So <laughs> we've really come a long way. So I'm optimistic that maybe by the end of 2024 or 2025, I will be able to be that guy who's like, oh, you haven't seen that yet? It came out three weeks ago. God, I would love that.
That's peak? Yeah. Yeah, that would be peak. Past Lives was a great film. Who owns the rights to Past Lives? That's, that, that would be, it would instantly go to the top of my Peloton watch list if Peloton allowed me to watch it. A24. Okay, does A24 have a history of selling their rights for distribution? It'll be on Showtime. It's on Amazon Prime Canada. Okay, not, not Peloton core, unfortunately. One of these days, maybe. I have a history of taking off my shirt. So true. It's been one week since you looked at me. Okay, you do nothing for us. All disrespect. You do nothing for us. All disrespect. Your next brother, don't get too attached to being alive. No prime video on Peloton? Yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's a little silly. There are four video platforms right now that you can watch on the Peloton. Like, through the bike itself. Obviously, you could just get a tablet or something. Uh, Netflix. Disney Plus. The National Basketball Association. And... Peloton Originals, which is just like interviews with Usher, apparently. I haven't even looked at it. But I feel like Peloton is trying to bend the other companies over. Like, I, that's the only reason that I could think that they wouldn't have, like, Crave in Canada, in the U.S., Max. The, and the only reason they wouldn't have like prime video, I think they're they're trying to be like, hey, give us 80 bucks to survive this quarter <clears throat> or we we'll, won't add Amazon Prime to the entertainment section on the bike. Bike is right next to the stream computer, right? Why not just point the bike at the computer? Me waking up my whole family at 6.07 a.m. Watching Torah, Torah, Torah through my monitor speakers at 117 decibels. <laughs> hey, Conkus Bonkus, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. What about Bluetooth earbuds? Listen, there's a lot of th there's one thing you need to learn about me, and I'm we go through this all the time. So you really should know it by now. And I should know better than to engage in it as well is the other thing. If I'm in my flow state, and I think this goes for anybody. If you're in your flow state and people are like, why don't you do it this way instead? All you want them to do is be quiet. I always, and this is just one example, it doesn't necessarily prove that this is always how it is, but it's an example I always come back to. Summer of 2014, I got really into running. Started doing couch to 5K, finished couch to 5K, I don't know, like four weeks, something like that. Did bridge to 10K, finished bridge to 10K. All of it was inside on the treadmill, okay? So at that point, that was like maybe three months after I started running. I was running 10K like four or five days a week starting to put in some longer runs, starting to realize that most of running is not running the same length every single day. If you want to become a more serious runner, you like pull some days down and then you do like one long day and then one fast day that's a shorter distance. So I was doing that all inside at the community center gym. And then I talked to uh, a friend of mine. They said, don't you live in Vancouver? They have like the most beautiful outdoor running trails. You're wasting your time. I was perfectly happy. And it's not their fault because they are right. And I was perfectly happy, running outside, perfectly contented. I said I could do this for the rest of my life. I said, you know what? They're right. Started running along like the seawall in the beach in Vancouver. First time, I was like, this is beautiful. They're absolutely right. Second time, uh, stepped on a pebble that was on the path. Foot went like this toward the meniscus in my knee. And basically, you have run like six times since then. I think a good lesson sometimes is that if so, if what you've got is working for you i wouldn't say be resistant to change 
But like, there's a reason they say if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The bike, I mean, we put in 25,000 minutes last year, 27,000 minutes. I'm not going to be tweaking the position just so what, I can watch past lives on my 19-inch Dell monitor. Like, I'll just watch fucking the insider on the bike instead. It's okay. Like the, Every time there's a change, there's a chance that things never come back, you know? Like, when you're on a diet and you're like, I could do this forever, and then you, like, go on vacation, and on vacation, the first day, you're like, I'm going to have a salad, and then the second day, you're like, I'm going to do a cheat day, and then the third day, you're like, I'm going to get my diet back on track when I get back from vacation, and then, like, two years later, you're like, oh, I'm fat again. So I like when you're in the routine, I'm very hesitant to an outsider going like, hey, here's what you should do. Trust me, I'm moisturized, unbothered, in my lane, watching George C. Scott's 1970 film Patton. I'm having a good time. You don't have to worry about me. Keep in mind, it's a bike that goes nowhere. The pursuit of better is always going to leave me in the same place. Too experienced, too experienced. Hi, Tomo. I can't move my... Every time I move my hand, this dude is like peeking his head up like his Evil Dead too. You would never escape the Matrix? I think that's probably true. I don't have the right kind of temperament to escape from the Matrix. Like, I think as soon as some lady came to my house and was like, follow the white rabbit, I might follow her like to the end of the hallway, but as soon as they went to like a nightclub at 11.47 p.m., I'd be like, sister, I gotta go to sleep. This is just, can't you just tell me? <laughs> can't you just tell me what you want to tell me? Why do I have to go in through like the back rooms to get here, you know? It seems like a whole lot of rigmarole for something that you could just p type up in a text message. <laughs> Plus, did you ever consider if I uh, escaped the Matrix, I would never have gotten to see the movie The Matrix? You might say, well, you could have lived the movie The Matrix. Yeah, but that doesn't seem nearly as fun. That seems kind of very difficult. Pretty low quality of life. They're eating that stuff that's got everything the body needs, but it doesn't have everything the body needs. You know what I'm talking about? Why no team spirit? I don't know what I'm doing, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, all I know about The Matrix, well, that's not true. I know a lot about the movie, at least. But it must have sucked ass to live on the Nebuchadnezzar because Cypher literally sold out the only six real people he actually knew for one steak and a glass of red wine. Like, it must have fucking blown chunks to live on that ship, brother. There was nothing going on. <laughs> Dude said, I would never betray Morpheus and Trinity. Agent Smith said, bet. How about a ribeye and a, and a Merlot? He was like, you got me. You son of a bitch, you drive a hard bargain. How big is your house to vacuum that long? You, there's a lesson that most people learn too late, admittedly. You don't have to say every thought that pops into your head. You recognize that you're verbally abusing me at work right now, right? Like, I'm in my damn job. I'm not just, like, a guy. This is my fucking office. You're, you came into my office and said, fuck you. <laughs> you realize how fucked up that is? You stepped into my office with the audacity to not even be a subscriber and basically said, hey, I don't like you. That's crazy energy, bro. 
Plus, it doesn't matter how long she vacuums. She's probably missing a couple of coins from the Apple Vision Pro, okay? If you don't get all the coins, then you don't get a gold star on the day. If you don't get a week of gold stars, then you don't get the update that skins your vacuum cleaner so it looks like a lightsaber, okay? Which is the whole reason you're vacuuming in the first place. And all, for that wisdom, all I get is crickets. I don't think we're getting more than four wins, lads. I don't want Kitsune. I want a better unit. I want the Loch Ness Monster. I've rolled 10 times. We definitely want the Loch Ness Monster. We're so back. A battle pass would motivate me to do chores more. Like, unironically, in spite of everything that I've said, I do sort of feel like everything that sucks would benefit from having a battle pass. I think we should consider ourselves lucky that like not every company on earth has put a battle pass into absolutely everything. Because it's it manipulates the human brain so easily. If there's something like in a game I don't want to do, I'm like, fuck that, I'm not going to do it. But if they're like, if you do it, it'll give you 60 loyalty points. And when you get 150 loyalty points, you get like a new axe. I'm like, well, I might as well just knock it out. It'll only take a second. Yeah, imagine if you had like a Gmail battle pass and if you replied to like five emails within five minutes of seeing them, you received like, I don't even know what they would give you, like a <laughs> fireworks when you, when you sent, every time you sent an email to someone, it would give you like a hit marker or something like that when they opened it. You'd be sitting at your desk like eight hours later, like, Tff. yes, <laughs> red dot. I love this because we're incentivized to roll. Yay, this is the way. Really? Tomo is very protective of his, his auditory environment. I will be done in probably five minutes. And I will be happy to send them to you. I might be done in like two minutes here, but... Peloton Battle Pass? I'm actually, people have me mistaken, by the way. They think that I love the Peloton Corporation. I don't. I love the engineering department at Peloton. They did an amazing job constructing this. It's made out of real metal. This is not corrugated cardboard and plastic, okay? The software team, I'm sure they're doing their best, but it hasn't manifested itself in quality on the screen yet. And the, the coaches, you know, they're, they're doing good stuff, but I'm just kind of, I've, I've, I've heard it all before. But I'm at the point where actually, like, I used to use the Peloton app on my phone to, like, program what I was going to do daily on the Peloton. But then when I stopped taking classes and started just watching movies instead, I didn't have to do that. So I would log in, or not log in, but open it up, like, once a month or something like that, just to see, like, track my metrics and stuff like that. But I didn't really use it too much. I just used the, the bike itself. And then... Um, I went to open the app today to see how I'm doing in the annual so far in terms of number of minutes in 2024. And it said, you've been logged out. Uh, and I said, well, might be the last time I use that app. I assume I've, we've, we've progressed beyond the point to need it. I'm a big believer in you should never log me out of anything. Except online banking, maybe. <laughs> that one makes sense. I'll give you that one. Rolls this turn, I will continue rolling then. I am to Roller of Doom. It's a bummer. Why? I'm still using the bike and the, the service. I'm just like, I don't need to use the app anymore. They're still getting that void check once a month. You eat bananas on the bike? That depends. How do you feel about someone who eats bananas on the bike? I only rolled twice this turn. 
It has to be done. <laughs> Should have probably frozen some stuff. Gives me the ick. Then, then ick away, brother. Ick away. I, uh, I do eat two bananas on the bike every morning. Why'd you stop with the classes? At some point, like, you just, you've heard it all. Like, every class is basically the same thing. You know, we're going to start with like a one song warm up and then you're going to be out of the saddle, down in the saddle going fast, down in the saddle climbing. You can do it, you know, blah, blah, blah. I've taken literally over a thousand of those. It was time to get back into some Kino cinema. Eventually you get the Christopher Nolan rant though. Well, that would require me to take a Jen Sherman class, which is not likely. because I've taken them before.